Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. Looks quite cool as well, that one does. Uh, I like the four rotor ones, I think they do look really good. Um, same as like the Laylee there, it's a 15 meter one there. Another really good one, we've used this one quite a bit, done a lot of work with that one. Um... This one here, it stays out straight, whereas the, the Laylee one, it's got this wide bit that spreads out. This one just drops them down, it, like, it comes out from the middle. So I, I quite like that one, I quite like the look of that one, but it's the Crone Swadro there that I would like to use most of all. So this is the one that we're going to try. 18 meter swath on this one, and this is the problem with it, is that 18 meters is sometimes a little bit too big. It's a little bit too much, that 18 meters, and it can cause problems. So we'll keep that in mind. Now, that one there, the Stevie one, is 13 meters wide. It's 27 kilometers an hour. This one does 19 kilometers an hour. This one is 13 meters here. Is that all we've got? I thought there was another one. I thought there was a Laylee one. No, that's in. that must have been FS17, and we didn't carry over. Right, well, we'll use this one here. This is... It does 19k. This one is faster, the Stevie version of it. And you do have the ability to change the colours on it as well, which I think is quite cool. So, being able to go a little bit faster, we don't have anything automated on this at the moment. Kind of liking the idea of having pink and... Should we go yellow? Grim colour, yellow... I'm like it. Actually, let's let's swap these round a bit, shall we? Let's do pink design, uh, pink main colour and rims, and then go yellow on the act. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay, I like this. I like this. It's not the speed. The the speed is a nice thing, but honestly, the reason I want it is so that I can colour it like this. This that's brilliant. I like that. I like to have my machinery on my farm to be. I I like to be able to see it. Someone would have come along and steal some of our machinery. I want to know that it could be instantly recognised anywhere in the country. That's the important part. It should be able to be recognisable anywhere in the country if somebody decides to come along and make the heinous mistake of stealing our belongings. Let's turn off the GPS there just for a moment. We go whizzing over the shop and we will get our new purchase. I'm in here. And we get our wonderful new shiny purchase right here. Just like that. I'll grab that one. And... Right. Look at it. <laughs> okay, I love the colours on this. I absolutely adore the colours on this one. Now, there's the road and there's the field. And in theory, we wouldn't want to be cutting up across the grass. But I'm wondering, is there another way that we can go... Turn the grass off there a minute. I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. So that one goes to there. This one go No, it goes all the way round to there and then back up. So if we're not going to cut across the grass here, we've got to go out and then back over to this way. But that's the bridge, which means i got to go all the way down to there and then come up across and get to this corner. Or we go out the shop and we go down here and we go up that way. I think we're going to go that way. We've not been that way before. So we'll go out that way and we'll have a little a little bit of a drive around out here. Let's come around there like that. Go on up the road a little bit further. And we want to turn right in here. Just on this bit here. I mean around that corner with there's some roadworks of some kind going on here. I don't really know what this is. They're building something on the road here. There's a bit of work being done on the side there, digging a load of stuff out, so. I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Some sort of road widening project, I would guess, maybe. Something like that. Either that or they're putting in some new cables. They could be putting in the high-speed broadband. Fiber fiber cables. They could be putting in fiber cables. Who knows? I've, I've no idea. I haven't stopped to ask them. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had some people tell me occasionally. When I get um, brightly colored machinery... I've had some people say that it sh I shouldn't be doing this. Because no farmer would ever do that. Which always makes me chuckle. <laughs> that statement, there is, there is no statement 
from players of Farming Simulator that is more inaccurate than the statement, farmers would never do that. That is the single most inaccurate statement. I'm not going all the way up around the rest of the road. I thought this one would just bring us straight in, but it doesn't. Um, there, is no, there is no more inaccurate statement than farmers would never do that. Okay, I can absolutely assure you. I had the minion weight in FS7. In FS17. I used to drive around with the minion weight on the front, and the first time I ever used that, Somebody said in the comment section, no farmer would ever drive around with something like that on the front of his tractor. It's really stupid. You should get rid of it. So the first thing I did was go and search the minion up. And lo and behold, what did I find? Dozens of pictures of farmers with real life minion weights on the front of their tractors looking as proud as could be because they had minions on the front of their tractors. Never say it cannot be done. Now... Is that cut straight? Have, have I wasted my time? Just like, did all I need to do was to spread it out? I've gone and bought that, and it was a complete and total waste. We've got our little tool here. There. Now, that says grass. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's, that's the growth. That doesn't tell me what I got on here. Oh, I know what I can do. If I go over this way... And we go and have a look at the actual grass that's growing down here. This this might give us some indication of it. So I do that like that. Need to go... Yeah, you need to look down a little bit further. 67% grown, 13% moist... Or 8% moisture, I think. And it wants 13% uh, soil moisture, 8% moisture. I think it's actually already hay, because that's not changing at all. I don't know how you're supposed to tell. This is this is the one thing that really confuses me about this game is how do you tell if you've got hay or if you've got grass on the ground? So I got that and it's it's not doing anything. So it's Do I only need to use a hay turner when the crop is officially classed as wet? Then I go over it with a hay turner. Otherwise, I just leave it spread out on the ground like this and then go and rake it up. Or just leave it in windrows. Because this isn't doing anything at all. This is not changing anything. There's no difference in it at all. And despite the fact that I absolutely adore Seasons and I think it's wonderful, it's incredibly frustrating to me just how... Um, cryptic they are about this whole haymaking thing. There's no clear explanation anywhere as to how you're supposed to do the haymaking. I've, I've looked previously and there is absolutely no clear explanation as to how haymaking should work. So, there we go. I've got that let's say it should stop long before it gets to that point. So there's our hay turner anyway. Complete waste of time by the look of it. We'll run this one back down to the farm. I'm assuming that's, that's got to be hay. That has got to be hay as it stands at the moment. Because grass, when it's cut, is a lot greener than that. Isn't it? There's only one way to find out. Ooh, I know what we can do. It's, well, there's two things that we can do. I'm going to drop you there. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get that one over there. And I'm going to go and try and... No, actually, if I try and pick anything up with this one... Just going to say the hay that is already in there, isn't it? So I know that at the moment it's saying that we've got hay in here. So we'll bring this over and we'll put this in for the cows. We've got to go around to the front of the cattle building. Put this in here. So the cows have got the rest of this hay. Then I'm going to go up and I'm going to get just a little bit. Empty that. There we go. Right. There's no hay in this one. So whatever it picks up first, whether it's grass or hay, that's what it's going to register. I don't think that it changes over when you've got your, your different things in there. So we'll go whizzing up here as quickly as we can. I might go and get the Zerian and just cut a little tiny bit of grass somewhere so we can run a test on that one as well. And find out what it's doing because it doesn't look like anything's changed here. I'll lower this one down, I'll start, but it does look a slightly different colour that's saying grass. Right. 
I went over it with the hay turner and all we've got is still grass on the ground. So it's not anything to do. The hay turner has no impact on what it does whatsoever. It seems to be completely and utterly useless. It doesn't seem to have any actual purpose. So I'll tip the grass out there. Now, there's a big difference between that and that. Big difference between the two. Right, that's different colours there for a start. So one says grass and one and... Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down. I've gone and tipped out that little tiny bit. And I would assume that if we left the grass in windrows, it would look green. So if I go here, like this. And then I go over to the hay turner over here. And I get you on, like this. We'll take the hay turner back up into the field now. And we're going to attempt this time to, um, tur well, we're not going to say attempt. We are going to. We're just going to turn that little tiny bit that we put into the wagon and then we tipped out again. Because that's a different colour. So I'm wondering if it's still going to come out as, it's still going to be officially classed as grass. But it's going to change the colour of it. All right, we've got that little bit right there. So let's see what that does. Because that's looking like hay to me to my mind that looks like hay but I'm, I'm guessing it's just sort of half dried so it's not hay start that one up with our nice yellow and pink beastie right let's change color now in game if it changes color like that that's then hay right in normal in the normal game so why is it not changing color for us why is that not happening no idea, but anyway, yeah, back to what I was saying with the, you know, no farmer would have these colours. I can assure you there are farmers all over the world that like to have brightly coloured machines. I used to work for a farmer that would paint a lot of their stuff, their own colours. They like brightly coloured machines. They wouldn't use pink very often, admittedly. They had their own colours that they used. They used um, yellow and green on just about everything. Everything that came in, as soon as it was getting a bit scratched up, they would paint the whole thing, repaint it. And it would always be painted yellow and green. It didn't matter what the original colours were. They liked yellow and green, so that's what they painted all their machinery. It was all matching. Um, I mean, it was quite cool that it was all matching. It looked quite. It, it did look quite good, but, um, yeah. it. I, I didn't particularly care for it myself. Not the yellow and green bit. The, um, the, the fact that I was the person that was constantly being given the brush and the... Uh, um, the paint pot and told to go and paint that bit of machinery over there because it's looking a bit scratched or rusty or whatever. Um, I had to do that a lot. I had spent a lot of my time doing things like that and I didn't really care for it. Now I don't know how long that grass up in the field has got to be left for. I'm assuming it's going to change colour again. So it's already changed colour once and if we'd left it in windrows it would have changed colour and... Oop. <laughs> I missed the lamppost. I missed the tree. I may have missed the road as well, but at least I missed both of those. Right. <laughs> that was, obviously, that was completely 100% skill and dumb luck was not involved in any way, shape or form. Not even a little bit. Now, go here. And yet, yeah, Jimmy, I'm really sorry. I still haven't actually installed the other version of this map that you gave me. Oops. I want to go back. I want to go to that one. That's the one that we want to go to. So I'm curious buying this one. Buy. 15,000. Is this going to land in front of the shop? Or is it going to get hung up on the shop? It's going to get a little bit hung up on the shop. It's a really long machine. Um, Jimmy's done another updated version of this map where... Uh, there isn't any spawning in front of the shop and he has sent it to me. I've just been a little bit neglectful in my responsibilities and I haven't actually installed it yet, which I should do. And I will do. It's on my to-do list. It is another one of the things that is on my to-do My, my to-do list is it's ever-growing, ever-expanding, never seems to stop. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to speed up time... And we're going to go to a little bit later in the afternoon. I'm hoping that the grass at the moment is 
See, I don't know if it's, like, properly classed as grass anymore. It might now be at a point where the game is classing it as hay or something else, which is why it's changed colour. So if it goes past midnight, it shouldn't deteriorate the size of the windrow or the, what's left lying on the field. But at the same time, it's still not officially hay. It's not properly dried out. I don't know. That might be the case. It, it, it may be that things like that can happen. I have absolutely no clue. We're going to go up here with the time ticking forward quickly because I remember the colour of the windrow when we came round. And it was definitely a lighter colour than this, wasn't it? All right, it was definitely a lighter colour than this. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and we're going to wait and we're going to watch and we're going to see if anything changes on this over time. See, so right here, there is absolutely no clue whatsoever as to how you actually make hay. It doesn't say that you've got to leave it. It says nothing about it whatsoever. There is no indication as to how you're supposed to turn the grass in the field into hay. I, I've gone over it with the hay turner and it did nothing. Made no difference. Although, I am curious if it's the fact that we used the Stevie one. Maybe there's a change that's been made to the base game one. Maybe that's had some effect on it. Might have. It's entirely possible. I and mean, we can see how much is laid out here on the ground. And... Once we pass from late spring, well, uh, from day six to day seven, it might be that you've got to leave it overnight in order for hay to make. Maybe it's, it's not just like a time on the ground. You may have to leave it longer than that. But just as it is... Oh, there we go. Right, so it's time. That's all it is. It's time on the ground and nothing else. So we've now got it. It's, eight, it's six o'clock in the evening. Time spent lying on the ground, and that has now turned it into hay. And it looked like nothing changed on the quantity or anything. So I'm going to bring that one out like that. Lowers down. This one then folds out on the wheels on the side over there. And we have now got this beautiful great big rake right here. Look at this thing. Look at this absolute monster. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start somewhere here in the middle. Like this. We go to there and we're going to go Alt-C to turn that on right there. Okay, I'm going to bring that up to there. And I'm going to go Control-S in here. Show lines, snap terrain angle... That's all looking good. That's just 9.14. But I don't have any other lines at the moment. So what I need to do to start with is I need to bring this one up to here. And I'm going to start it and I'm going to lower it like that. And then I'm going to go Alt-E twice. To press Alt-E twice for it to work for some strange reason. I'm going to go up across the field in a straight line like this. And then I'm going to go Alt-E again like that. And then I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to auto-width that to 19 meters. I thought this was 18 meters. Do anything else. It goes out to there and out to there. I'm going to lower the auto-width. Now you can do the increments on here, right? So I'm going to increase the increment to 0.1. Then I'm going to minus that. And do it down to 18.5. There. So we're going to go 18.5. Like that. And I'm going to set it to it like that. Now 18.5. You can see it is actually a little bit inside the outer edge of this. That's fine. I'm quite happy with that. I absolutely don't mind that at all. And I'm going to bring this one up to... Uh, about there. I'm having to guess this a little bit, roughly where we're going to go. So we're going to we're going to do it like this and then once I've gone and done all of the land work, we'll then go round and we'll do one more all the way around the edge. And that will go and tidy everything up. Give us one clean run around the edge. Then we will go and get our baler. It's going to be the next job and we will 
come back up and we will bale up all the hay and then we've got to go and remove all the hay from the field and we've got to go and take it elsewhere so we'll just do that one there a minute and come back over here oops right i didn't mean to do that just for a second i meant to go alt x first and bring that one up a little bit and then i meant to go and do those two like that and that's got to come all the way up here. Right up to the end. And there. Right. That's what I wanted to do there. And then... Sometimes it takes a minute or two for it to sort of let go of the... Um, of the vehicle. So you have to turn your wheels quite sharp in order to sort of persuade it that you want it to let go. And then um, it does it all at once. So you sort of get to the end and you suddenly have this really sharp turn that you didn't... Kind of, you kind of didn't really want it to do it like that, but um, it done it because it didn't want to sort of release release its hold, relinquish its hold that it had. This is the GPS system, like hanging on to your steering wheel. Now bring that one up like that. I'm gonna have a good look at this. There's a reason for this. You know exactly what it is. I want to be. I, I want to take a nice screenshot because I think that's quite a cool screenshot right there, actually. I've done my screenshots. I can start racing back up through this way. We'll finish this one off. We'll be able to go and get our baler. And I'll also be able to see if I... See, I'm, I'm absolutely not certain at the moment if I've got the variable bale capacity mod active on this map. I've got the mod, and I think the mod is absolutely fantastic because you can change the capacity of your bales to anything you want. If you want 20,000 litre bales running along with... You can have 20,000 litre bales. And I really, really like that. I like that you've got the option there. So if you're doing solo play on like a four times map or something. And you don't want to be handling thousands and thousands of bales. You've got the option to get put your variable bale capacity up to 20,000 litres per bale. Um, so you're essentially moving 10 bales with... No, uh, yeah, 20,000. So... You're saying there's five bales in one, that would be. And you can, it does give you instructions on how you can go and make your own op, uh, your own capacities as well. So you could alter it up again. If, you, if you'd if you like to do like a lot of bailing, but you don't like... Because this is something that I actually like doing. And I, I used to find um, playing uh, other versions of the game. I liked doing the bailing part... But I don't particularly like doing the gathering the bales part. I actually really quite enjoy just sitting doing the bailing. I don't know really. I don't really know why. I used to do bailing in real life. I did quite a lot of it. Um, so there's probably something to do with that. But I find it quite therapeutic, just kind of running up and down the lines on with with the baler, working through a whole load of different fields. And I I, I really quite enjoyed it. It's, it's a, a pleasant experience. It's something that I I like to do. And the thing with being able to do it in the game, yeah, that, that was really good. But then you'd have to come along, you'd have to pick up the bales afterwards. That was the bit that I didn't like until I found auto-load trailers. Auto-load trailers, that they changed gaming experience for me completely. So I'd use auto-load trailers to load everything up. And then you've got the baler as well going down through. Now, don't get me wrong, I really do like to see a field of bales left behind. It's absolutely fantastic seeing the field of bales left behind. Um, that's, that's one of the pleasurable things about doing the baling, seeing all the bales on the field. But increasing the bale capacity is also another good thing to do. Like it, Every now and then I would play and have like a 40,000 litre bale capacity so that you've then got um, a tenth of the bales that you've got to go and handle. 40,000 litres per bale, it, it just worked. It worked really well. It just seemed to be like a, a, a really suitable setting to have it on. I don't really know why, but it definitely worked for me. It, it absolutely worked for me. I, I did that a few times, um, putting, um, putting it right up that high and then going off and doing a load of work with the balers. And you go back through, you can still use the auto load trailers and stuff like that, but you've got a huge amount more straw. So you've got far less bales that you've actually got to go and handle. And you still get all the pleasure of uh, doing the baling. And if you 
you know, there is some satisfaction to be had in clearing some bales off the field, going and selling them. You get all of that, but you don't, it, it doesn't take quite as long. So if you've got an entire map, and this is what I used to do, was I would um, work the entire map all at once. So if I was doing wheat, I'd grow every single field on the entire map, apart from a few small ones that I had set for grass, uh, it would all be wheat. So I'd go through and I'd combine it all, and then I would get the balers, uh, the baler going, and I would personally go through and bale up every single one, all the way through the entire map. Now, as you can appreciate, that takes a bit of time. Um, so then when you get to the end of it, and you've got to go and pick all the bales up, that is a lot more time-consuming, and especially back in FS13, I used to cause some problems picking up all those bales. That's a lot of bales for the game to have to be able to deal with and process. So Alt-C right there to turn off the GPS system. And then I'm just going to go into here and we're going to go right round the edge of this field. I'm really pleased with how the Swadro has worked for this. Uh, when we've got a much thicker crop on the ground, I may not be quite so pleased with it. It may end up causing us a few more problems. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, this is actually working really nicely. And I like... This is some uh, another reason that I've always liked this one. Is that I like the, the really wide rows that you get left behind as well. It just, it just looks quite sort of pleasing to see it like that. And even when you're doing really big bales, like 20,000 litre bales. If you've got the Swadro gone through first and done it. The rows that you leave behind they still end up getting a surprising amount of material in each row. So you end up getting a surprising number of bales down each row as well. I did just miss one little bit there. The bit back on the corner, I'm not worried about. I can go back and easily tidy that up with the baler afterwards. And there's another little bit here that I'm unsure if I'm going to get all of it. No, I'm not. I've left another little bit. That's fine. We'll, we'll soon pick that bit up when we come through with the baler. No, it won't be an issue. And we'll go up there. And then all we got is one tiny little bit down through here just to finish off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all of the raking done. So we just need to go and buy our baler. That will be the next thing. And get back up here and bale up our hay. Then we've got to get the hay from here back down to the bottom and get it into a shed before we get any rain on it. And we will be doing more hay. This is not the only hay that we're doing. We're definitely going to be doing some more hay later on. I'm not quite sure when we're going to do it, but we will definitely be doing a bit more. Um, we, I mean, we might just end up having the... We can start folding this one up as we go back down. Uh, we might just end up having the fields that we've got nearer the farm. And the only downside to this crone swadro is that in the small fields, it can be a little bit difficult to sort of get around, right? It's um, it's a little bit sort of clunk <laughs> a little bit clunky trying to get it in and out of the, the corners and, and get it round. But, I mean, it, it can be done. Don't be wrong. It can definitely be done. I've done it myself quite a bit. I have used this one quite a bit. I'm thinking we ought to put a shed here somewhere because, like, this Swadro here, this, this, this is the perfect spot for it. I'll leave you there. I don't... Did I get a front weight for this tractor? So I'm not... Oh, no. I'm gonna go, I want to go to garage. That's what we want to look at. So I'll go through there. Now, I know that we've got a couple of barrel weights kicking around. I've got one there. And... No, I didn't. Right. Well, we'll go and get the baler. Which is going to be that Massey Ferguson one. And at the same time, we will also get ourselves treat ourselves to a front weight for this tractor now we can come through here and again this is the bit that i keep forgetting is that we can come up to the bridge and then we can't get onto the road down the bottom oh yes we can we have this i forgot all about this i've seen it before and i thought oh, that's quite handy we better use that well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode, so we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that, if you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like? And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, 
Thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.